to book a phone consultation and to get fly glasses, go to swagboy360.com. Uh. What's good? What's good? This your host, Swag Boy from swagboy360.com. Uh. Today's episode The Office Slut Wants to Be My Roommate. Got an email from the homie Sean, shouting out of Manhattan, New York City. Hey yo, Sean, thanks for the motherfucking donation, man. I appreciate it. And thanks for being a supporter of the channel. Let's jump right into it. He writes, hey Swag, I love your channel. I'm a long time listener. Please keep giving us that hardcore red pill advice. Here's my problem. About three months ago, my brother moved out of our two-bedroom apartment where we were sharing as roommates. Since then, I've been having a hard time finding a roommate that I feel comfortable with in terms of living with. Most of all, people who I've interviewed seem weird and sketchy. Last weekend, coincidentally, a girl by the name of Amanda who works at my job and to whom we as guys at the job refer to as the office slut responded to my Craigslist ad looking for a roommate. She came over and she said she liked the apartment. As a matter of fact, she said she loved the apartment and can't wait to move in. She fits the criteria of the perfect applicant I've been looking for in terms of roommate. The only thing is, I'm wondering if this will turn out to be a bad idea in the future. I've never shared a place with a girl who I wasn't dating. In the past at work, me and her sometimes would flirt, but it wasn't nothing serious. She is very attractive, and given the right opportunity, I must admit, I probably would smash. At work, she dresses very professional, but provocative at the same time. Her personality is very cool and bubbly, and honestly, she seemed like she would be a cool roommate. But in the office, she has a reputation of getting around with multiple guys. Last year, it was rumored that she sucked off two guys at the Christmas party. Last week, we heard that she has been sucking off the boss to get more vacation time. We work in a financial district in Manhattan at a hedge fund where I'm the stockbroker and she's a secretary. I'm currently paying $2,500 a month in rent. If she were to move in, that rent will be cut in half. So swag boy, am I making a mistake by moving in the office slut as a roommate? Thank you. Alright Sean, it's a little tricky situation right here that you in. So basically on one hand, for three motherfucking months you've been paying like $2,500 a month in rent. You know what I mean? And like, it sounds like you in dire need to get a motherfucking roommate in your apartment so they can take on the other half of the rent. Give yourself some financial breathing room. But then on the other hand, you got a bitch saying, look, I like this apartment. I can move in right now. But the thing about it, she is the office slut. So here's what I recommend. I recommend that you talk to the bitch, you know what I mean? Y'all have a sit down, a conversation, and you lay down some motherfucking house rules. Because, being that she is an office slut, you gotta let her know she can't be bringing niggas in and out of your motherfucking apartment. You know what I mean? All times of the night, got a nigga knocking on the door. Yo, yo, Amanda, where you at, yo? You know what I mean? She is an office slut. She gotta respect your house. Although this is a roommate, she is a roommate, and she will be a tenant in your apartment, you still are the man of this apartment, of this house. Now, you mentioned in the email that given the right opportunity, you would fuck, you'll smash. You said this, right? But here's the thing. Now that she could possibly be moving in, you got to throw that out the window. Let me tell you why. 
you do not fuck your roommate because when you fuck your roommate or if she sucks you off or do any type of sexually sexual favors for you eventually she will want to be compensated eventually she will feel entitled what will happen then by you fucking with your roommate now she gonna think mm, well this month I ain't gotta pay rent this month mm, I could be late or this month I could pay half of my half of the motherfucking rent being that I'm giving you some pussy or being that she's sucking your dick this is why you don't fuck your roommate years ago right right after I graduated high school right me and my homeboy right my homeboy had a cousin who was the night manager or evening manager whatever you call it of Wendy's and he used to hook us up yo like he used to tell us like look if y'all come through the drive through at this time I could hook y'all up you know what I mean cause we about to close and I'll give you any any other leftovers or whatever I could just hook y'all up with mad free food I'm like oh, alright cool that's what's up yo so we used to go there right and his name was Larry now Larry was the manager of Wendy's now what Larry used to strategically do was hire bitches he wanted to fuck he would only hire bitches who he wanted to fuck. So if a bitch came in, wasn't his type, okay, uh, well, I'm gonna keep your application uh, to the side, and then when we have an availability available, whatever, I'm gonna give you a call. Shit like that. But for the bitch he wanted to fuck, when can you start? Your starting date is such and such date. I need you to come at such and such time. Boom, bitch, you hire. So one time, Larry, man, he came over to the crib when me and my boy was chilling that. And Larry was like, yo, y'all got to come to my job today or tomorrow, yo. I got to show you this little bad bitch I'm fucking. So we laughed. We like, nigga, she ain't no bad bitch, nigga. We like, nigga, we saw them bitches you fucking up in there. I mean, don't get me wrong. They was all right, but they was some average looking bitches and shit. So Larry was like, nah, nigga, come at such and such time, nigga. Don't come to the drive-thru, nigga, walk in. I'm like, all right, all right, bet, bet, bet. So we pulls up at Wendy's, right? Get out the car, we walk in. Soon as I walk into Wendy's, at the cashier register, I see this little bad little sexy red bone bitch, right? Had nice hair, cute, sexy. I don't know if they was hazel green, hazel brown. Bitch had cute eyes, right? Now, Wendy's, you know, they wear like the little polo shirt that say Wendy's on it and shit, right? This bitch, even though she had that polo shirt on, that shit was tight. And you could tell that bitch had cleavage. I'm like, damn, that bitch look good, son. But the downside to all this shit is this. Although that bitch was cute, that bitch had an attitude problem. That bitch felt entitled. That bitch lacked quality good customer service. And her and the rest of them other bitches kept fucking up niggas orders. Niggas walked up and said, I want a, 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 a Wendy's chicken sandwich with no cheese, lettuce, no mayo. This bitch put mayo on my motherfucking chicken sandwich. When I told her, I said, look. I asked for no mail. <sighs> well, you should have told me when. No, no, no. I asked for no mail when I ordered the shit. What you mean? So instead of him checking this bitch, he said, I, I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. Had an attitude and shit. So the downside that although he was fucking these bitches, the fucking restaurant was ran unprofessionally. Because these bitches were entitled. These bitches felt, oh, since I'm fucking a boss, since I'm fucking a manager, I ain't got to do my job. These bitches was coming in to work late. Bitch, it's 5.15. You, so, you were supposed to be here at 4.30. In other words, bitches think just because they fucking a boss, now they got job security. Now they can act like a bitch because nothing going to happen to them because they fucking the boss. Like sometimes you could just walk into like an establishment 
or work environment, you can tell what bitch is fucking a boss. You know what I mean? Bitches not doing a fucking job, no repercussions. Bitches coming in late. Bitches acting all. D- d- bitches just loose with the motherfucking mouth, and the boss just, you know what I mean? Just, 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 just brushing it to the side. You, yeah, you, 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 you know she fucking a nigga. So my advice to you, Sean, is in this case, do not mix business with pleasure, man. Keep your dick out of this bitch mouth and out of her pussy. And out of her ass too. Because I know a lot of you freaky niggas say, oh, what about the butt? No, nigga. Keep your dick out of this bitch, period. Because, Sean, if you start fucking this bitch, what's going to happen is that you're going to see your rent. Your, her part of the rent going to be coming up short. What? She's 2500 so half of 2500 was that? 1250 a month she got to bring in? Ah, uh, you start fucking this bitch, she going to be bringing in 700 500 Cause you gonna be fucking this bitch and getting your dick sucked by this bitch The next thing you know she gonna be confiding in you Telling you her problems Like did this how bitches run game You know what I mean So now when she gets you to feel sorry for her And she's giving you pussy She expects something in return In return from you She expect you to start now Paying her half of the rent If she put it on you If she suck you off good and give you that good pussy and how you pussy whip, it's a wrap, nigga. You gonna go back to paying the whole 2500 a month for rent if she put it on you and had your ass whip, nigga. Now, Sean, I know you thinking, you saying, damn, I could have this bitch be my roommate, pay, the half, pay her half of the rent, and fuck this bitch. Now, in a perfect world, that'd be cool to the motherfucker, yo. But we know bitches ain't that cool, man. Bitches got issues, son. Bitches will come with their problems, nigga. It ain't gonna go that smooth, nigga. You probably thinking, yeah, I could go out with the homies on the weekend, holla at these bitches in the club, you know what I mean? Bring them back to the house, smash them. Or if they, if I go to the club and none of these bitches give me action, fuck it. I got the office slut living in my motherfucking apartment. You know what I mean? Shit. That, that's always a good option number two. You know what I mean? In a perfect world. But we not in a perfect world. So moving forward, put everything down in writing. The lease agreement, put everything down in writing. Because right now what you doing, Sean, you subleasing your apartment to a roommate. That's called subleasing. So make sure everything is in writing. And make sure every time she gives you her half of the rent, you give her a receipt. You know what I mean? So if you have to take this bitch to court to get your half of the rent, you got proper paperwork to prove this bitch owe you your motherfucking bread. And also, make sure you speak to your landlord and have him put her information on the lease. So in the event, if she moves out before the lease is um over with, you can now take her to court to, f- to retrieve your part, her half of the rent that she was supposed to pay. In closing, Sean, just remember this, man. Three things a bitch will fuck for, and that's money, food, and shelter. So remember this, when your bitch, I'm sorry, when your roommate, the office slut, is walking around the house in those boy shorts with that bra on, or sometimes she purposely gets naked in front of you, and she's like, oh my god, I didn't see you, (laughs) she's trying to seduce you, nigga. And if she acts like she wants to fuck you or suck you off, remember this. She ain't trying to fuck you or suck you off because she likes you. She trying to do it because she don't want to pay that rent. So moral of the story, keep it professional and make sure that bitch pay that rent. That was today's episode. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm going to catch you on the next go round, my nigga. Hello.